Hi, everybody. It's Nick here. Sometimes I've been called a pessimist by folks who tell me that my glass is half empty rather than half full. Of course, this is pure nonsense. It just doesn't hold water, and it also hurts my feelings. So, I've been thinking, what if we approached this purely subjective metaphor from a physics perspective? Maybe we could give it real meaning, give it more scope, and have it actually be useful. I propose a little thought experiment. Here goes. Imagine a half-full, half-empty glass of water existing in space and time. If the quantity of water in the glass is always at the halfway mark of its total volume, then we can say that the volume of water does not fluctuate and that the glass is in a state of equilibrium in an isentropic process of constant entropy. Since, according to the first law of thermodynamics, without an external force acting upon it, the glass and its volume of water will remain unchanged. Now, imagine that this unchanging mass of water is transferred to a smaller glass. In this second glass, the given volume reaches nearly to the top. If this glass is observed by the same person who has been looking at the half-full, half-empty glass, they would be inclined to call its owner an optimist. Now, if we transfer yet again the same mass of water into a glass that is larger than the median glass, the observer would assume that its owner is a pessimist. Now, let's statistically approach this from a stoastic random probability distribution curve. Regarding the median glass, the observer is asking a rhetorical question of its owner. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? The owner is forced to make a binary choice. The small glass, full to the brim, leads the observer to declare that their subject is an optimist. The larger of the three glasses will appear to the observer to be nearly empty. In the case of the largest glass, they will declare the owner a pessimist. Now, if we apply Jungian archetypes to these empirical observations, we can develop the following arguments. The median glass gives its owner the ability to decide whether they're an optimist or a pessimist. The observer is obliged to remain neutral because they have no hard evidence to verify one category or the other. In archetypal terms, the small glass infers a confined worldview, closed-mindedness, a suspicious nature, multifaceted insecurity, chronic anxiety, depression, and antisocial tendencies. Yet, the observer of the full glass of water would unhesitatingly declare its owner an optimist by its relative fullness without taking into consideration its owner's inner state of being. The contrary is true 
for the owner of the largest class. This person's mind is expanded. Their horizons are vast. Their intellect is lively. Their imagination is boundless, and their curiosity is insatiable. However, upon observing the nearly empty glass, our judge would declare the person a pessimist, using the criteria of the half-empty, half-full glass model. Well, folks, that's my humble thought experiment. I hope this will be useful to you the next time someone brands you a pessimist with a half-empty glass. Now you can just rain on their parade, pour water in their wine, and tell them to go jump in a lake. <laughs>